when I was younger, I was like really convinced that one day I'd be famous. Now I am. The reason why we created Instagram was to be able to share and communicate visually. It's something I care deeply about. I think internet fame tends to be like attractive people that have lots of followers because they're attractive. It's kind of like being a celebrity but for no reason apart from the fact that you're pretty. Internet fame I think is when somebody has millions or thousands of followers. Why do people seek fame? Because it gives you a kind of recognition and kind of power and, and that obviously feels good. Um, I'm really vain and I like getting a lot of likes and compliments about my face and so I post pics of myself. But when you get a hundred likes on an Instagram photo, even if you're not one of these little celebrities, you feel happy about that. Their social media has created this new kind of validation for people. I'm Nat, I'm 17, and my Instagram is Badass Nugget. My main audiences are probably like people like me, people who like looking at people like me. Um, people probably see me as a weird person with blue hair. I think it's something that people like to do because it's sharing photography and cinematic stuff and it's a way to publish things. It's creativity and it captures people's emotions, people's thoughts. This is my Instagram. As you can see I post a lot of selfies of myself and my most liked selfie has around 5,000 likes just over. These are some of the comments I get. A lot of people comment about like my eyebrows and my hair and that I'm beautiful and stuff like that. They're not just following that person. You know, they're, they're a part of that person's audience. They're in their entourage. They know what that person is waking up to. They know what they're having for lunch. My guess is with these kids that experience a lot of fame from it is that it's a very strong high, you know, because it, you're getting a lot of attention, and, um, but that it's not actually fulfilling what they deeply need and want um, in terms of this kind of human connection. If a bitch has got a lot of likes, I know to do that again, I know that like an audience likes that more, so I'd repeat it. Charles Darwin says, the reason why we've thrived as a species is, our, is because of our social nature. I remember one time I didn't post a picture for like three days because I was just, I was not in the mood and they kept commenting, where are you, where are you, we miss you. Whether or not that's good or bad will remain to be seen. And we have no idea what the psychological impacts going forward will be of social media. We already know that certain kinds of social media make people feel better, certain kinds make them feel depressed. Um, but we do know that there are things that happen in social media that make you feel good. You feel validated by a group of your peers, by a group of your fans, however it is you just decide to describe it. I think being a teenager is a dangerously narcissistic time because I think that you're also trying to figure out your self-esteem generally, figure out who you are. And so I think that narcissism comes in the fact that teenagers seek validation even more than adults. You're more aware of what you look like when people like pointing out certain things about your face. 80% of my photos on my phone are of me. 100 pictures sometimes, maybe about 20, depends. Depends on my makeup that day. I think thin love is in some sense the way our culture defines love, which you see all sorts of ways between teenagers and between people all over the place, which is the I love ya, love ya. We're using love in a very, very, very thin way. The fact that we have 50 BFFs, um, you know, when in fact BFF means best friend forever. <laughs> you can't have 50 BFFs. Um, whereas thick love is really about um, uh, being in a mutual relationship in which you're both being listened to, you both feel heard, you both have deep trust between you, you're able to express your vulnerability with each other and trust the other person won't mock you. And that's, a, you know, when someone listens to you and you get to share opinions on things, that actually fosters a sense of thick love. Good things can come out of being famous. You can use that fame for leverage in other things. Um, but I will say that a lot of people think that it's leading to the downfall of our society. I think it's a good thing and a bad thing. You do want to live life in the moment still. But like, I think it's good to capture moments on your phone and share it with others on social media. I think it's a good thing. Everyone being glued to their phone, it's getting in the way of life. Like at a concert, people aren't just enjoying it, they're not just appreciating the music. It's like they have to show everyone that they're being sociable and that they're out doing stuff. It's like they have to show proof that they've done it. Everyone 
everyone like on the internet kept telling me I was really ugly at first and it made me really sad at some points and I didn't go outside for a while because I thought I was really ugly and I didn't let anyone see me because I didn't want people to see how ugly I was. Cyberbullying could be slightly different to normal bullying because it's not, it could be threats and blackmail which could get out of the internet, for example like distributing your personal stuff like pictures and information. Being Instagram famous is literally nothing and means nothing in the grand scheme of life. So live your life, be happy, don't give a crap about the numbers because it doesn't mean anything. And just enjoy yourself. Look at social media as a creative outlet and don't look at it as a place to gain a fame or a following because trust me, as someone that's Instagram famous, it doesn't make you any happy.